back run and Rebels of Nevada Las Vegas survived, but they needed a strong second half to do so. American tennis legend, Jimmy Connors, 105 men's pro titles, winningest ever. Yet Connors is without a championship since this victory over Yvonne Lendl 30 months ago in Japan. Will the two and a half year drought end this weekend? Connors in the far court is playing confidently as he defeated Tim Wilkerson yesterday in the quarterfinals. The brash left-handers solid play send Jimmy into today's semi-final round of this Grand Prix Payne Weber Classic. And at 34 years of age, Connors continues to look ahead. If I can the kind of attitude that I'm playing with and, and play the kind of tennis that I'm playing, you never know what can happen. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about this game. I think that's one reason I've been able to stay around so long is, is a break here, a break there, a, uh, one great match during the course of a tournament at the right time, you know, could uh, could lift me to, to any heights I think I can go. His semi's opponent today, Californian Brad Gilbert. In the near court, Gilbert ranked 18th in the world, disposed of Marcel Freeman in yesterday's quarters. Following his win, the former Pepperdine star, fresh from his best year ever, 86, reflected on today's match. I think the first time I played him, I was uh, more in awe of him, so I had a little trouble playing him. But then uh, the next two times I played him, I felt like I had good chances to, to beat him. And the third time, I served for the match against him. And then the uh, fourth time, I got him. So I got him the last time, but it's been a while since we played. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. The Grand Cypress Resort near Orlando. The story, can a great champion Jimmy Connors finally win another pro title? Or will Brad Gilbert painfully remind him that age is Connors' biggest enemy? It's the $315,000 Payne Weber Classic. Today, the semifinals. Today's action is brought to you by the financial professionals at Payne Weber. By AT&T. The right choice. By Volvo, a car you can believe in. And by Transamerica, for insurance and financial services, the power of the pyramid is working for you. It's a magnificent day in Central Florida. Temperature in the 80s. It'll be warmer on the hard court surface. A cross breeze could be a factor here at the Grand Resort Center Court. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg with Bud Collins. Welcome to our NBC Tennis Tour that will take us on to the French Open in Paris and, of course, at Wimbledon in London later this summer. And Bud Collins busy in the offseason, resplendent, sedate, uh, making shirts out of old pants. It's My nice you... Taylor <laughs> Murph says this is either Harry Truman leftover or early Picasso. <laughs> well, for Jimmy Connors, uh, that is the question. Will he win again another title? I don't know. We've come here to see that. But James Scott Connors, the pistol packing patriarch of the Nabisco Grand Prix circuit. Wait, 34 years of age. Is he the oldest now? Not quite the oldest. Guillermo Vilas is one month older, but Jimmy is out there campaigning. Vilas hasn't played yet this year. Jimmy's line is, thank you, Payne Weber. My line is, thank you, Jimmy, for 17 years of zest. Never out of the top 10 since he became a pro in 1972. It's interesting, Bud, the language of the younger players. Brad Gilbert said he got him when he finally won Memphis indoors. A big, big championship for Gilbert. And Gilbert had his best year, won four titles. And Connors, none last year. Much better. But we must ask, has the pistol pack and Patriarch run out of bullets? I wonder. This is his best chance, though, Dick. He's got a field that he thinks he can beat. And there's no question about it that here in Orlando, it's a Jimmy Connors crowd. Payne Weber, it's, he's their spokesman. These are his people. They'll be pulling for him to have the big weekend this weekend. And we'll have the opening serve. Semi-final action in just a moment. The financial side. All successful people and companies have a financial side. Let's go, partner. But to really be a winning team, you might need Whoa. some help. We need some help. You need Payne Weber behind you for financial expertise, sound advice. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Payne Weber. You're welcome. 
awfully stiff. You've got to loosen up a little bit. Yeah, got started. Everybody seemed to enjoy their afternoons of tennis here in Newport, Rhode Island. But I'd have to agree with my tennis ancestors. It sure is fun to play tennis. To tell you the truth, I'm glad we've seen a few technical improvements over the years. For more information on how to have fun playing tennis, contact the USTA. Players warming up here at the Grand Cypress Resort Center Court, a beautiful facility, and it's a terrific day for tennis. It'll be a bit warm down on the court, but for the fans, a cool breeze to complement the mid-80 degree temperatures. Brad Gilbert in the near court against Jimmy Connors. Connors at 34, still the highest ranked United States player in the world, ranked seventh currently. Well, it's extraordinary because he's number one in Look at how he reached this pinnacle. Kelly Everton, the New Zealander, Greg Holmes, former NCAA champion, and Dr. Dirt, Tim Wilkerson, who finally had to quit. What a gritty match that was. He crashed into the side fence at one time, dived twice on his face on this asphalt, and he finally had to say, Jimmy, I can't go any further. Tim Wilkerson, one of the scrappiest players on the circuit. And Connors, who likes a fierce competitor himself, as he is, uh, complimenting Wilkerson yesterday and really seemed to enjoy the experience in the quarters. Brad Gilbert is nine years the junior of his opponent today. He sure is out of Piedmont, California, a Davis Cupper. And he got his start, he said, where another great player will get into that. Mark Dixon of nearby Tampa, Matt Anger, Californian, and Marcel Freeman, who played for UCLA, a New Yorker. And Brad said, guess what other great player started where I started? And I said, well, who is it? Bud, she said. Davy Tennis Stadium in Oakland. Piedmont is an enclave of Oakland. And he said, Bud started there, and that's good enough for me. He said, I'm a public parks player. He said, I played most of my early tennis, though. He said, in Piedmont, we had two ratty hard courts that were torn up. But he said, that's where I learned to play. And my sister, Dana, and his sister, Dana, who is now retired, was a national champion, too. The national clay courts she won. Well, Brad Gilbert has said that his number one interest uh, for much of his youth was basketball, and he still is an avid fan of that game. In fact, he quickly will give you his top five NBA players. He says Charles Barkley of the 76ers uh, uh. is his favorite, and, and he feels his success now at 25 is relative to the fact that he wasn't a great junior player. No, he wasn't, and he started out as a junior college player for the Foothill Owls wonderful team they had out there at Foothill Junior College and then he played one year for Alan Fox coach Alan Fox at Pepperdine All-American there went to the final of the NCAA championships and lost it to Mike Leach from Boston who was playing for Michigan and Gilbert I think uh, he not only felt awful at losing but every match in that NCAA championship at Athens Georgia he had his meal, his evening meal, chicken parmigiana. He ate that for about eight straight days. He said, it finally got to me. He said, I was starting to grow and think I was going to win the final. But it was too much chicken parmigiana before the final. And Jimmy Connors, of course, was the NCAA champion in his one and only year at UCLA in 1971, left after his freshman season with the Bruins. But the question is... In the minds of the some 5,000 who will watch the activities this weekend, can Connors break out of the slump. Rich Kaufman of Seattle, very good umpire, one of the four professional umpires on the Nabisco Grand Prix circuit who travel all over the world. charged very effectively he's played well at the net misfires on his first opportunity today he has been more aggressive gilbert fields i uh, talked with him earlier this morning that to beat connors he has to come up with some aces he has to beat connors to the net that court good serve by gilbert but the roll to connors Gilbert certainly enjoyed the serve. 
second ball, when we see it, is like a wad of cotton candy. We should put the stopwatch on the second serve. To the net. 30-15. Well, he's got Connor well behind the court, and he decides to go in against Connor's strength, the backhand but it works well. And Brad looked up. I've got to lower my voice. We're too close to the court. First serve. story here at the Payne Weber Classic. Yvonne Lendl was in the original field but has had arthroscopic surgery and you won't see Yvonne, the number one player in the world, for a couple of weeks. You can see that Gilbert has a wrap around that right knee and he has a scheduled meeting with Dr. Frank Joe out in Los Angeles in a couple of weeks. much vitality by Connors getting himself a break point the chip lob now watch Jimmy he's going to come in you should follow a good lob in position perhaps a foot deep for the volley and the old sky hook Jimmy moves back well long you heard the cyclops. high pitch sound of Cyclops I'm not <laughs> sure that's be. the best uh, <laughs> advertisement for a machine calling the service line. <laughs> if it imbibes, we're in trouble. point. Boy, that was a hard-working point. Connors on a couple of occasions appeared he wanted to charge. He just couldn't see the opening. percent success on first serves against Freeman yesterday gets away with that second serve Ooh. all right get your stopwatches ready it is not one of the overpowering second balls but it worked
Connors firing a two-handed backhand cross court that set up that point. That shot is right out of the barrel. A long first game. Gilbert now, as he approaches this deuce point, is two of eight for serves in. Number one in the world for five years. Dropped down to eight at the end of last season and currently number seven in the world. Gilbert currently ranked number eight. Point against and wins the opening game. For the fifth time, Connors won the first three matches, and then Gilbert indoors at Memphis won the title. That was one of seven times in the last two and a half years that Connors has been a finalist, but unsuccessful. Another was the Payne Weber last year when he was destroyed by Yvonne Lendl, 6 2 6 love. an awfully good lob by Gilbert because it pulled Jimmy right out of the point for a moment. The gunner. Shot, wasn't it? was one of Jimmy's earliest coaches as he said Jimmy will beat you with lobs and he said not enough players practice their lobs these days <laughs> now Cyclops may have had a little of that gin he's been <laughs> advertising you heard the beep and the ball was clearly in Cyclops lay off the booze and the machine called a fault when there was none I think they ought to take those machines and send them to the Smithsonian. <laughs> I know. Richard Kaufman uh, indicating, of course. There's been a bug in front of the machine or something. Man overrules machine. Needle. First serve. Kaufman, the umpire, rules correctly. First serve coming to Jimmy Connors. 30 love. Just checking to see if something was in front of it. Sometimes an insect can set it off or something like that. Jimmy is going to make a delayed approach. Says, that's pretty good. Maybe I ought to go in. Now, Gilbert goes right, and the ball ah. goes the other way. And the game to Connors, one all. He really is a remarkable athlete here much older than those the, with whom he is contesting on the average tournament, and yet just a shade below the number one player that we cheered in the 70s. Well, in totting up those 105 professional tournament victories, that's the men's record. He had his biggest season in number of wins in 1974, 15 tournament titles. Thank 
15 lot. 1974, Brad Gilbert was in junior high school while Connors was <laughs> winning the Australian Wimbledon U.S. Open. Gilbert appeared very confident this morning. You always look to the last time when he beat Connors at the National Indoor last year. That lifted his morale considerably. Oh! That was quite a championship for Gilbert. He beat Edberg as well at Memphis. That was Connors in what the quarters, wasn't it? Yeah. Gilbert is very solid off the ground. People think of him as a serve and volley player, but he can play well from backcourt. Really showed us something last year in Mexico City, beating Leo the Valle of Mexico in a tight Davis Cup match from the baseline. And at love, Gilbert wins the third game. On serve 2-1, Brad Gilbert. Takes to win. Between them, they've won 19 Grand Slam tournaments in Converse tennis shoes. You can never let up. But this year, they're in something new. You're always looking for something to give you an edge. Introducing the Grand Slam Victory Series from Converse. Something that keeps you a step ahead of the other guy. GSV, now the advantage is yours. High over the Grand Cypress Resort. The SeaWorld airship, captained today by Mike Fitzpatrick from Newport, Rhode Island. That Davis Cup match I mentioned, Brad Gilbert, last year, United States against Mexico, Tim Mayotte lost the opening match, and Gilbert playing Davis Cup for the first time. It was a must situation that he win on clay, and he did, beating Lavalle as the United States came through in that match. 1987, another story of Paraguay, and Bud Collins will be addressing that a bit later today. Connor set up that point so well he gets the buggy whip after this as Gilbert showing excellent movement is ready for the tough down the line. strategy as is so often the case against Connors take the pace off the ball particularly to the forehand ah. oh. delayed call but it is confirmed by the umpire Rich Kaufman
$50,000 to the winner of this championship. And for Gilbert, should he be the champion, it would make him the newest member of the Tennis Millionaires Club. He's sitting at 950 plus right now. And that is really a crowd. I remember when Rod Laver was the first to go over in 1971, and everybody said, unbelievable, check those figures. That can't be true. But there have been many, many tennis millionaires right. since. Bouncing like a boxer, always in position, and he will catch the sideline with a previous shot and then score on the overhead. And if you're looking for labels on his racket, you won't find them. Imagine that, a racket with no advertising. He's using the no-name, designed by a friend of his, whom he won't identify as yet, ah! mid-size. To all. The Steely has been packed away, apparently, for good. At last, with the racket with which cool. Jimmy Connors won most of his 105 titles, 102 of them actually, the Wilson Steely, which looked like an antique in the last years, the T2000, he used it from boyhood. He went away from it for a while to try another racket by the same maker, the Wilsons, a midsize. He didn't like it. And now he's having a hand in designing his own and many of his friends think this will help prolong his career. So I hope he saves one of those steelies, and I'm going to ask him for the International Tennis Hall of Fame at Newport, Rhode Island. It should hang there proudly. Ooh, good beat. Gilbert had a lot to cover from short range. Now he got the first ball in, and so he's going to play serve and volley. A little late in getting to the tee, but when you can stretch like that. 30 love. final match will be played this evening here at the Grand Cypress Resort. Tim Mayotte, number 12 in the world, to the longest shot left on the board. Christo Van Rensburg who's had a terrific tournament, the 24-year-old player from South Africa. He played so well last night against Derek Rostano, whom we like very much. An All-American from Stanford, Rostano beat the number two seed, Andres Gomez. But Van Rensburg had the answers. And with Paul Anacone, Van Rensburg still alive in the doubles. But, but he's hitting very confidently. Only 25, but if you check his head, you're going to find a lot of gray hairs. He said that this game does that to you, but you won't find any in the head of James Scott Connors. And speaking of oldies, the oldest player actually on the circuit is Sherwood Stewart, the greatest player in the history of Goose Creek, Texas, who's still in the doubles. He's nearly 41, playing. There's the ace. That's what Gilbert was pointing toward. I'm thinking about earlier this morning. It's 3-2 in the opening set. No breaks of serve. Connors serving 2-3 opening set. Connors on the year is 14 and 3. And Gilbert 10 and 4. Connors losing that one final. He was in the National Indoor at Memphis when he had to pull out after losing the first set with a knee injury to stop ah. Edward. Yeah. Reserved. 
The ball touched the net, but Gilbert thought it went wide. And Gail Bradshaw, who's on the far line, whose call it would be, said the ball was good. I thought it was There's wide. Gail. He's the referee for the U.S. Open at Flushing Meadow, and he's working lines here. yesterday first serve percentage just under 80 percent in beating Tim Wilkerson through the years he's always been in the top two or three hasn't he in first serve percentage serve has not been an especially hurtful weapon, but he can give you the hook when he needs it. I remember him saving a set point against Vetus Garolitis once at Wimbledon with a big hook that startled Vetus. But it's a sure serve. Toss is right there. There's not a lot of effort expended, and he's ready to play the point. And he realizes with not too much vinegar on that serve that he's got to have high percentage, and he does have it. Oh! with himself there. The whole court was his. He did not choose well. As you shall see, the drop shot was a beauty. And he has it covered, but look at all that territory to Gilbert's right. He'll express his dismay at the poor lob. Even the greats choose badly. Big point at 2 3 in the opening set. That's, no, no. That's the third time in this game that Gilbert has just been long. He thought he'd caught the line. Mark Taylor made a quick, sure call with which Gilbert disagreed, but the call is confirmed by umpire Kaufman. Gilbert's an opportunist. Good approach down the line. Touch volley, and Jimmy may be trying to do too much with it. And he went to the one hander on the backhand. You don't see that very often. First 
first time that Connors in this opening set has been challenged on his serve. Gilbert working this point so well, jerking Connors everywhere, way wide, and that will be followed with the winning forehand down the line. Connors had a break chance in the opening game, but Gilbert erased that. Broken Jimmy Connors and takes the lead four to two. Four Not two. a good game for Jimmy at all after he started out 30 love. An indication of how much this is a Jimmy Connors crowd. It's just a trickle of applause for Gilbert after that service. On the court, approaching the century mark or almost right at it 100 degrees it will go much higher Jimmy goads himself he's much like Rod labor at a similar age the spirit was willing the flesh was willing the big points were tough on the nerves. Oh, mm. shot of the match. Well, Gilbert is hitting right with Connors from the baseline. He's showing his confidence, born, I think, of that win the last time they played in Memphis. When you clock a backhand like that, you're feeling groovy. Connors feels it's been a trade-off. He won't admit to any uh, lack of talent. He says that I've gained and experienced what I've lost in the physical part of my game with age. Jimmy always bouncing and making the play, but he's out of the point. 40 love at 4 2 Gilbert. First double fall to the match. Gilbert was ill yesterday, although victorious over Marcel Freeman said that throughout the opening set he was dizzy, didn't see well, he had the stomach flu. Game to Brad Gilbert. When we return, Jimmy Connors will be serving to stay in the set. ...against Jimmy Connors. You're going to need all the professional help you can get. Payne Weber's capital management team is ready to provide that help right now. Because whether you run a company or invest in one, Payne Weber, the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Hey, great match. Hi, Sammy. Thank you, Payne Weber. Next time I'm with those guys on my team, okay? Let's go eye to eye at the Volvo Tennis Chicago. The superstars of tennis are on NBC Sports. 
Well, that one break for Brad Gilbert was enough, and he went on to close out that first set 6-3, but not without uh, some difficulty. Well, there was a very interesting eighth game with Connor serving. He was down love 40, and Gilbert had to struggle and didn't win the game. He had five set point opportunities, and this was unnecessary tiring for Brad Gilbert. He was playing about two games lengths more than he needed to play in that game, and that was important to Connors to save those set points, even though he lost the set. And Connors took advantage. In the second set, it was again the sixth game was the turning point. As Gilbert was broken, Connors went on to win that set at 6-3. He did indeed, and Gilbert had a chance to break back near the end of the set, and Connors starting to pull his strengths together. The strengths developed over these 16 past years as a professional. This is his 17th season right now, and calling on his experience and calling on his legs, which appear stronger than Gilbert's at this stage. You know, the flow of the match was really interesting because there were several times where you felt Gilbert had control and only to lose it very quickly and then it seemed to be Connors in the driver's seat. Neither man could really establish a long range uh, superiority over the uh, man across the net. That's the way it's going to be I think from here on in in Jimmy Connors career he has so many faithful Connors zealots but they're going to have to fight through every match as their man uses everything he can recall from the past and present to bring him along. All right now let's go to the third set. Each man with a set they stay on serve we join action in the fourth game. The referee. Third set, Gilbert, and two. Oh! Hey, two fake calls out. Gilbert doesn't like it. Hey, two fake has been on the circuit for years. Let us try to test Mr. Tufank's eyesight. The volley. Well, get Brad, you're not helping us. You were in the way. Tough call. Well, he didn't help his case there by stepping directly in front of our camera. <laughs> it was a tight call, but Tufank was quick, and that's the way to call him. Quick. He's there. Oh, and for the first time, and Gilbert will regret not that one so much as the first one, which he baby and kept Connors in the point. Patty Connors loves it. Her old man can still run. So that one was not hit with authority. Connors, let's count him. One, two, three, four. But he doesn't have to take too many steps. And the third time the charm on those defensive lobs by Connors as he saved that point. And then Gilbert gave it to him. The Love first 30. overhead error by Gilbert. And perhaps on nerve, misses on the forehand, and Connors sits on a triple breaker. Connors that people have cheered for so many years, the hustling Connors to stay in that point that featured the defensive lobs as the key point of this oh. match. come apart on that first point the call his volley was very close to the line it was called wide he didn't seem to recover he missed his first overhead for love 30 
and then two unseemly errors the way he's been hitting his boundaries a forehand and a backhand and he knows he's in the enemy camp this is Connor's territory this is Connor's sponsor these are Connor's people once again Cyclops missed that one but it was clearly a fault That's the third Connors double fault. Well, Cyclops only reads about, what, foot, foot and a half, and anything beyond that, then That's the... That's true. Maybe I wasn't kind to Cyclops. You haven't fall. been. I named him, but I've defamed him. I don't feel Gilbert's out of this match. It has turned toward Connors, but Jimmy is not overpowering by any means. Gilbert beating Connors at Memphis for one of those four titles last year. Jimmy Connors without a title in 86 and in 85. You have to go back to October 84 in Tokyo for his last win. That was number 105, the men's record. Ah. Well. 15, Chris Everett Lloyd holds the female record and the all-time record, 148. Double break point for Gilbert. This is like a hitter sitting on a 2-0 or a 3-1, even a 3-0 pitch. This is where Gilbert has to dig in, a chance for him to break back and draw even on serve in this third set. And Connor's like an angry pitcher that can't find the strike zone. And a winner again this week as he donated all of his earnings to cancer cause. Oh, what a gallant uh, tribute to his father. And following our action here, tennis from Grand Cypress Resort. Dick Mast is the leader after two rounds of the USF and G. So stay with us for golf action. Connors has not filled his followers with confidence after building a 3-1 lead.
Ben! That is painful. The Corkleys there, spread out like a map of the United States for Gilbert. But the leaping save that you'll see right here by Connors. Woo! Seemed to be out of the point there, but Gilbert hits it long. A one-handed volley. That's all he could do. Just get out there, out to the end of his limb. Connors usually will win that statistical battle, but Gilbert's error rate increasing. Gilbert has missed one overhead of the match, but that was instrumental in his being broken in the fourth game. Third set, 2-3, 30 all. Consider all the things that are going for Connors and playing in his home territory in front of a highly partisan crowd. You have to admire how Brad Gilbert has stayed together. He's competed well. Get it past him. There's one. Another. Where should Brad go? He decides down the line once more. Guarding the net. We don't see it very often, but he can do it. And was at Wimbledon in 82. It, he won the grand title. There's the money at stake in this one. That Connors showed that he could attack and win at the net. Oh. A chance to break and go 4-2 for Connors. Now, is Gilbert commiserating with himself or is he feeling groggy? We mentioned before, he had flu. He told us Thursday night he had terribly long and difficult hot struggle in beating Marcel Freeman in three sets yesterday. And we saw the temperature on the court uh, moments ago already over 100 degrees. Very sure of himself on this point, Gilbert. They've been on court almost two hours. Unrelenting that sun. was caught in no man's land, had to half volley it, and retreated madly. Let's watch Connor's movements on that point. Okay, let's go in. Whoops, on my toenails. Let's go back. 
and Gilbert obliges. Second break point for Connors in this game. Just reading the body language, but it does appear that Connors, at this stage of the match, physically is in better shape than Gilbert. Looks fresher. Bailing out Gilbert, although Connors disagrees. He thought it was a fault. Tom Cook on the service line does not agree. Tom said the ball was good. Tom, who was our umpire last Saturday. The women's doubles, the Plymouth doubles, Marco Island. Delightful stuff too, bud. That was uh, enjoyed that. Thought it'd be closer. It was I did too, I, Dick. Yeah. yeah. Boston Globe Rider uses that. <laughs> On the line. Ooh. And the third chance for Connors to break. And go up 4-2 in the third. And uh, Gilbert indicating again that uh, the wear and tear of this match and his own condition and the heat taking its toll. So this becomes a huge point. Jimmy Connors seeing his opponent in apparent distress is a point from a 4-2 lead. Watch is uh, sending off the sound that could be confused for Cyclops. Connors has broken and 4 2 in the third. And Brad Gilbert knows how those Christians in the Coliseum felt because he's surrounded by. Not many friends. Jimmy Connors has built up goodwill over the years. I would say he's the most popular American player, perhaps the most popular player since I've been covering the game. He's had his moments when people didn't like his actions, but his zest, his fire for the game, his competitiveness, his longevity has won just about everybody. Now, Rich Kaufman, the umpire, asks that somebody turn off a radio. Counters has broken Gilbert, but a reminder that he had broken him at 1-2 as well and lost his own serve. Now must hold to go 5-2. That court. That's been Gilbert's best play all day, that forehand down the line. And it doesn't seem to be the forehand of a stricken man. Probably his net, too. That's an mm. interesting... Sure is. ...current statistic this year. Connor's not... ...going the distance. Touch the net before the ball bounced twice. Let's listen to umpire Kaufman. 
Connors may have lost that point. The crowd feels he won it. As the wife watches, it was Connors' point. He's going to have to scamper. To one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now the ball must bounce twice before he touches the net. It was very close, but the point is awarded to Connors. And now a point away from 5-2. Yeah, going back to that last point, but the key was Connors, the way he darted for the net. And he actually had five steps into the court before Gilbert made that a drop 12-yard dash. Son of the Connors, Brett, Mama, first row. Oh. Yeah. the Connors, he leads 5-2. Gilbert will be serving to stay in the... October 21st, 1984, in Tokyo, the last time Jimmy Connors won a Grand Prix title. He's now a game away from a trip to the finals of the Payne Weber Classic tomorrow. It would be his eighth final in the span since that win in Japan. And he has earned it against Brad Gilbert, that chance. Although Gilbert still has only one breakdown in the third set. That's all. He hasn't put in enough first serves. Gilbert surprised me when I asked him, when's the first time he ever saw Jimmy Connors? I expected him to say on television. He said, I was a linesman. I was 11 years old on his match when he won a tournament in Al Albany, California, 1972. That was Jimmy's sixth tournament win. 30, 15. A linesman yeah. at 11? He said, I used to work as an official. He w I said, I was a ball boy first, and then when I was 11, they started using me as a linesman and a net judge. Tennis Rich fan, Gilbert, so that's been part of his life since he can remember. I have to ask if he has any Fortescue blood when he was net judging. 40 15. 40 15. Winner of this match will meet in the finals tomorrow, and we'll have that live for you here on NBC Sports. Either Christo Van Rensburg or Tim Mayotte will play in the other semifinal tonight here at Grand Cypress. Right here, Gilbert has to be careful not to look forward to the crunch game, which is coming up. He has to hold serve to get there. And of course, Connors with delight in winning it right here. Jimmy has shown us legs today. Now, Gilbert didn't fool him at all with that drop shot.
Chicago from 4015 to Deuce and counters two points from victory. a point from victory. First match point. Six, six, four, six, two. Now Jimmy Connors in his eighth final tomorrow since his last victory in Japan. Let's get his feelings about this match. Here's Bud Collins. James Scott Connors, are those really 35-year-old legs? Uh, right now, I'd say they are, Bud. But I think while I'm out there, I, I think that uh, the kind of shape that I've got my I've gotten myself into over the course of the the end of '86 and the beginning of '87, I think has helped me a lot. I think the only problem that I have now is uh, that once I get finished with a match like this, that uh, it may take me a little longer to recuperate. But while I'm out there, I feel pretty good. You lost the first set. What was going wrong for you? I think he was playing well right off the bat. Um, I wasn't uh, playing the kind of game that I really wanted to play. I hung back a little bit too long, and I had my chance on a short shot, and another ball, and then get in, which was a mistake. In the second set, I started taking advantage of those shorter balls, playing a little bit more aggressive and actually hitting my shots a little bit more firm and a little bit more solid, and I think that helped me in the end. Of course, Enberg and I were second-guessing all the way, waiting for you to really bust one of those tough ball second serves of Gilbert. Was that difficult for Well, at the beginning, I tried to do that, uh, but the, the ball, today, it's a little bit warmer than, than before. The sun's shining, so the ball takes a little bit higher hop, and the ball moves a little bit faster through the air, so uh, I tried to come in on those shots a little bit, and the ball took off and flew on me, so I felt it was better to hit the ball firm and solid and get, get into the point. Thank you. We'll delight in seeing you in the final. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Bob. Dick. All right, Bud, indeed. Tomorrow in the finals, Connors will have the chance to snap the two-and-a-half-year silence as a Grand Prix winner. He'll meet the winner of tonight's semifinal match. Tim Mayotte will play Christo Van Rensburg this evening. In nine months, he'll meet Christo Van Rensburg of South Africa, an upset winner over Tim Mayotte in the Payne Weber Tennis Classic from Orlando. Then, it's the USF&G Classic from New Orleans. Yesterday, Ben Crenshaw shot a 5 